Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Now let me know down in the comments if you think this garage pour is worthy of a gold medal or not, and especially on time. So I didn't expect to time this garage pour when we showed up here today. I didn't tell the guys we were doing this or nothing. It wasn't until after I watched the video back, I was like, geez, that, that actually went pretty fast. So let me know what you guys think. Is it worthy of a gold medal, especially on screed time? I mean, I timed the bays when we screeded. You'll get to see the times. And then I added it up at the end. You'll see that at, towards the end of the video. So it didn't really take us very long to screed this at all. So let me know if it's fast or if it's slow, what you guys think. Are you guys better? Should we have won a gold medal or not? <laughs> thought we'd just have a little fun with this. Now there's five of us here today because... We are going to leave two guys to power trial to finish. One guy to power trial, one guy to kind of do edges. And then three of us are going to go set up a big pool deck. Probably it's about 30 minutes away from this job. And it's just easier, you know, to go pour first thing in the morning. This is 7 a.m. in the morning. With everybody, get this thing in just as quick as we can. And then just take the rest, you know, the two or three of us go up and go do something else. Get something else ready for the next pour. So we got one truck here today. This this was about 10 yards of concrete. We're pouring a 3,500 psi. We got a mid-range water reducer in it, so we can pour, you know, six and a half ish slump, six and a half seven slump with the mid-range, without affecting the strength at all. And we tell the guy, you know, mix up, back back the truck up, mix up, and just you know let her rip. And we'll fill this thing up. What's cool with having five guys is. Especially with a rear dump, it takes one guy to hold the chute. That's what I'm doing, which isn't which isn't too bad because I can kind of control the pace of the concrete. I can tell him to to speed it up if we need to. I can control the flow of the chute where I want it to go, how long I want it to be in one spot or not. So, in in those regards, we like having a rear dump. Sometimes it is cool having front dumps. These guys do have front dumps too. They just didn't send one today. But if the driver's doesn't really know what you want then he kind of keeps moving the chute back and forth he backs up he pulls ahead it actually takes longer to do it that way if you don't have just the right driver with a front dump so again what's cool about having five guys here is you know when we get started one guy's got to hold the chute but one guy can also go back and start magging edges now we we get the laser out and we shoot a chalk line at grade we we shoot uh, pencil marks at grade then we snap a chalk line to those pencil marks you can kind of see them there down about six inches from top of wall so one guy can start magging the edges and get the edges all ready to grade at grade so we can screed off that and then you know two or three guys can puddle and rake and then as soon as we get enough down where we can screed then we can start screeding this stuff now in a garage this size this was 26 by 24 We'll pour like 90% of the concrete right out. Just leave a little hole at the end. In case we're high, we can pull it into that hole. But on stuff this small, we generally pour almost all of it right out. And we're using that little pin in the middle you can see right there. I'm walking right by it right now. That's uh, a guy named Hal from Crete Pin Pro sent us those. He sent us a box of those. I think about 10 or 12 come in a box. And those are great, use those as grade pins. So you set that with a laser. It's basically a piece of half inch rebar and it's got that yellow grade uh, piece that goes over it and has a set pin on it. So you just set your, your uh, the piece of yellow thing by, you, by the laser, you tighten it up with a set pin and then you can use that to go by as you pour. So it kind of gives you an idea of where grade is right in the middle. Now. You, a lot of times you'll see in some of my videos we'll just leave the laser up and wet pad stuff too but we decided to use it on this they are actually pretty convenient to use so now we get as we get more poured out I got Darren went back to mag along with Eric so now we're getting two sides of the garage uh, grade magged out as we get this poured so two guys puddling two guys magging and you know me holding the chute we could probably actually pour the concrete out of the truck just a little bit faster if we wanted to like if we were really going for speed you know we'd probably pour about twice as fast but 
obviously that wasn't the case when we showed up here today was trying to see just how fast we could pour this it just worked out um, that this actually went down pretty fast now in Maine a lot of the codes in Maine require when you have an attached garage like this to the house that you got to put two inches of styrofoam under it in case you guys were wondering what we was pouring on top of um, it's two inches of styrofoam and that's basically just for heating you know uh, heating element type thing in the garages that are connected to a house if a garage this size wasn't connected to a house then you have an option to put it in or not you know if it's not going to be heated you don't really need to put it in but the codes the building codes in some of these towns in our state are really strict and sometimes they're a little overkill i think for people that styrofoam that stuff's really expensive it's you know a four by eight sheet can run you about 50 bucks for one sheet so by the time you put that under the garage floor under the house floor you know you're talking a few thousand dollars just to put styrofoam under there where years ago when you know when i first started pouring they we didn't put styrofoam under anything unless it was just exterior stuff that we just didn't want the frost to get up under so we got our garage door form set to grade also right to floor grade so we can screed right off them and we like setting them to grade and then afterwards after the concrete sets up and the guys start finishing they'll taper those garage doors in behind where the garage door sets on the floor so it, those all those garage doors will have a taper to them and I like doing the taper I know a lot of guys will put like a two by down you'll have like an inch and a half lip that the garage door sets down into you know everybody says oh the the rain's gonna blow up under the taper if you don't put that lip there well I've been doing this for 42 years I've never had somebody say water's blowing up under my garage door just because I only put a taper the tapers work fine one thing I like better about tapering my garage door versus the lip is you know there's no trip edge there somebody parks in the driveway they start walking in the garage and they're not paying attention they trip over that or what like what if you have a wheelchair somebody in a wheelchair and they want to go from the driveway into the garage now they gotta you know try to wheel their wheelchair up over that inch and a half lip that just honestly I mean I know it's fine and it probably I'm sure it works great for keeping water out of the garage but there's other things that it could make issues with too whereas a taper a nice taper in your door is a smoother transition to me I don't know let me let me know what you guys think about that so Eric's magging around the creep pin pro right now magging our center pad and we're gonna get ready to screed here real quick we're gonna just hand screed this the garage slopes two inches from the back to the front so the backs two inches higher than the front and that's pretty much standard on most our garage floors here in Maine is we'll slope them all out the front if they don't have some type of drain in them and when everything's all said and done you don't even really notice the slope as far as walking on it or anything the only time you really notice it is if you park in the garage and your cars you know you got rain either dripping off the the car or in the winter if snow is melting off the car the water hits the floor and, and tends to want to work its way out the doors and the doors don't freeze to the concrete if the bottom of the doors are wet so that's another myth so right now what Darren and I are doing is we're striking what we call our grade pad our wet pad and that's what that's what uh, one guy is going to use to go by as we screed these bays out and the other guy will use where they magged up against the wall so each section of this we'll call a bay so we're going to screed down this one bay right now and then over there where Eric is to the right kind of kind of puddling the concrete that's another bay over there and this is kick screeding that's a 12 foot screed two guys on a 12 foot screed I know a lot of guys just do it by themselves but they don't do it this fast especially with two guys raking behind you like that that know what they're doing and when you don't have to stop you can screed so that's roughly 12 to 13 feet wide that bay by about 13 feet so you know there's a hundred and 
about 150 ish square feet right there done in 41 seconds and no one's doing that by themselves using a screed by themselves i don't care what they say mm -hmm. so is that gold medal worthy right there that screeded that bay let me know but we're gonna we're gonna ju basically judge it on the whole thing that's what it looks like you know that's i'm kind of looking at my end there when i'm screeding i want to make sure my end is scoring on the on the grade pad or the wet pad and that's how we can out me and darren can tell that we're screeding that nice and nice and flat with no dips and no humps is the end of our screed is scoring every time we pull it back and if it's not then we go over that same piece again until it is and we probably could have used a 13 or 14 foot wide screed instead of this 12 but so what we're doing is we're kind of passing it back and forth just a little bit just to make sure we're overhanging the edge of the screed onto the pad there you can see that little bit of a line right there i'm leaving on the end see that that means i'm good and i just keep moving forward and then when when we bow float over that you can tell under the bow float it's nice and flat and level under the bow float there's no gaps under it All right, so that a minute and 18 seconds on that one, 41 seconds on the other one. That one took a little longer because we passed it back and forth a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just strike, we call this striking in front of the garage door. Even though the forms we put on are really, really good, we make sure they don't have any dips or bows in them. We always strike our garage doors with our screed just to make sure it's nice and flat across there. And then that's, we'll use that to go by when we screed the whole bay down. If there's ever any issue with the form on the garage door, you know, there, there might be like a, a dip in the board or something, maybe an eighth of an inch. And we don't want that after we're all said and done because you'll see that, kind of see that after they build the garage and put the garage door and the garage door sits down on the concrete. And there's a little gap under the middle. Nothing worse than that. You can see as we pull that screed back how there's just a little roll of concrete coming back behind the screed. And that's kind of what we want. Now we don't want too big of a roll, but we want just a little one. And that kind of fills it in. You can see how that fills in really nicely as we pull that screed back. And that means I don't have to kick quite as hard either to fill my footprints in. It kind of just fills in as I go. But the rhythm between me and Darren, that's really important too. You can see we're on the same rhythm. I'm not pulling the screed faster than he is and vice versa. That makes a bay screeded down like that pretty fast. So 52 seconds on that one. So three quarters of that garage, a little bit over three quarters actually, got screeded down really fast. So the kind of things that might slow us down are things like this, you know, waiting for the concrete to come back out of the truck to fill in that last little piece. I mean, it might take longer for this to happen than it did actually to screed that bay down. And it's not really an issue or nothing, but it's just like if we were going for time, we'd want to have that already started to dump in there before we were even done screeding, fill that little piece right up. So the, after we get done screeding, I mean, the very last thing we got to do is bull float. And really, at this point, I think Darren's going to go back and start bull floating here in a second. So we, we could have one guy bull floating right now. Just put all the handles we got on and we could reach all the way across this garage with all the handles and the bull float we have. And get this, get this moved along a little bit quicker if we really wanted to. What we don't want is we don't want to dump too much concrete in this last little piece then have to shovel a bunch out. So we want to try to get it as close as we can and not make a mess. We've got we've done a bunch of uh, houses and garages. This is like a this is like a housing development in here. I don't know how many we've done. Quite a few dozens. 
this guy, the developer here, he's he's developed these little housing developments all over this this area or these towns that we're in right here. And these are about the sizes, you know, you got like a 40 by 28 house and 26, 24 garage or 28, 24 garage. They're all pretty similar, a little bit different, but pretty similar. Here's a good shot of just how uh, kind of kind of creamy or pasty the concrete is. It it fills in and it mags out really nice. Most of the loads we get from the different companies, we use basically three different companies. And most of the concrete we get is all pretty good. We haven't had too much trouble with the concrete this year being rocky or bony. Most of the loads are pretty consistent between the three companies we use. We generally like using a 3500 PSI mix for our floors too versus say like a 3000. We just feel like there's a little more cream in the concrete when you're finishing it like when you're power troweling it and you're steel troweling your edges tend, tend to have a little bit more cream makes it a little easier to finish it might set up just a little quicker than say a 3000 psi but i don't know when you do it every day like we do you don't really notice it that bad as far as having to hurry to power trial anything you can see how nice it looks under that bull float darren runs that bull float down and back and it doesn't matter like which direction we go if we're trying to cross bull float from our screed lines or if we go in the same direction as our screed. You know, a lot of guys say, oh, you got to cross, cross your screed lines to make sure it's flat. Well, when you screed concrete every day and you get it really flat, then that doesn't necessarily matter as much. Like if you don't, if you don't get your screed as flat as you possibly can, then the bull float will help kind of level it out a little bit better. You'll be able to see if you got any humps or dips. But we don't notice that stuff when we screed. It all looks the same no matter what direction we go. Here I am just magging again. I got my DeWalt gloves on and my DeWalt mag. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, DeWalt's making concrete tools now. All right, here's the last bay. Got Luke and Eric on the screed, so they might be a little bit slower than me and Darren. <laughs> but basically the same thing. The rhythm's the same. The kicking's the same. The only one that doesn't know how to screed like us is young Luke there, the guy in the middle in the yellow. He's brand new. He just graduated from high school. So he's in the learning phases. I'm not really sure why they stopped there, but I guess they were tired. But it looks like we got plenty of concrete, so we don't need the concrete truck anymore. He can pull ahead and start washing his chutes. And these guys will get down to the form, then they'll just step outside. Kind of clean that form, edge form off a little bit. And it looks like we ended up with just enough concrete in there so we didn't have to waste any. It's actually going to take Darren longer to bull float than it does for our total screed time. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to bull float. Now he's really careful and fussy with the bull float. That's, that's an important part of the finishing process. So a minute and 31 seconds to get that base greeted. So those guys were pretty slow. They were slower than the whole, the rest of it. So four minutes and 22 seconds of total screed time on this garage. Now, what do you guys think? Is that gold medal worthy or not? Let me know down in the comments. I probably should have timed the bull float time too, just to see if that was actually was longer or not. But I, I think it probably did take him a little bit longer to bull float. Yeah, you see me just touching up, touching up my edges a little bit before he bull floats. Luke's kind of magging that last little piece where we pulled the screed off. Trying to make sure everything's nice and flat and there's no, uh, no divots or low spots in front of the garage doors. So everything gets smoothed off really nice before we go to finish. 
and that's just part of being fussy part of being professional just makes makes your finishing that much easier but right there where those garage door forms are so we'll taper that from the form out just beyond the inside of that concrete wall a little bit that concrete wall is eight inches so we'll taper it out maybe about nine inches from the form and the garage door sits at about six inches seven inches out from the form so that means the taper goes up under the garage door and it works really good if you haven't seen that you know that's I got that in some of my other videos and some of my other social media you can check me out on Instagram you know everything about concrete TikTok, everything about concrete and you'll see some videos of stuff like that boy some people really just I don't think that's the way to do it. But you, that, if you look at the bow float, I mean, it, it looks really smooth and nice. There's a nice even plane to it. Darren's not having to throw any mud up under the bow float to fill stuff in. Which you see a lot. You see a lot on other YouTube videos of guys doing concrete. They're throwing shovelfuls of concrete up under the bow float to fill in areas that are low. I don't think, I don't know if I've ever had to do that, to be honest with you, and all the time I've been doing concrete, I guess just some, has something to do with the way you screed, I think. So total pour time on this, you know, including Darren still bow floating here, ended up being... I think it was the time of the video, 23 minutes and 32 seconds. So a total of 23 minutes to pour out 10 yards, you know, two minutes and a little over two minutes per yard, which isn't, which isn't too bad. I mean, if we were to do this, if I were to tell the guys before the pour, hey, we're going to time this, we're going to do it as fast as we can, but we still got to do, you know, high quality work. I'm sure we could have shaved, you know, probably at least 10 minutes off this and probably done this in, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 minutes pretty easy. Maybe we'll try that in an upcoming upcoming video on a, on a garage that's just about the same size and just see if we can compare to 23 minutes and 32 seconds. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think. You know, let me know down in the comments for you guys at Pour Concrete. Do you pour it similar to us? Do you screed the same way we do? Do you have do you mag your edges like we do? What kinds of things do you do the same? And then if you do stuff differently that you think is faster, you know, let me know down in the comments. For you guys that don't pour concrete, you know, just let me know what you think. Do you think we're pretty fast? Do you think the quality of work is good? Would you want to hire us to do a, a concrete floor like this, a garage floor, a house floor, or whatever? Um, and, and let me know too down in the comments but thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one mag float steel trial edges cut the doorways down and they'll probably be out of here by noon all sawed power trial and everything and the other three of us will go set up that slab we got two by 12s over there we got wire mesh we got rebar to go around the edges so we'll see you over there setting the slab up <laughs>